Today we have um, Thibaut Carpentier from IRCAM who is going to talk to us a bit about his and his teams and his colleagues' work to um, combine the GUI power of Juice with the acoustic and interactive power of um, Open Music and Max MSP. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. So let me maybe start with the question. Who is familiar with Max MSP? Okay, not that bad. Who is familiar with uh, Open Music? Okay, so I'm going to give a very two second uh, introduction to it. So Max MSP, you have a number of boxes that uh, contains data or perform some operation and you connect the box and you can uh, do something. Same with uh, audio signal, you can have some boxes that generate signals and you can operate on it. Okay, visual programming. Uh, open music is somehow similar. You have some boxes, you connect some boxes. It can also process some data, but it's not meant for uh, real-time processing, and it's more uh, focused to uh, symbolic processing of music. So, for instance, you can uh, create a sequence of notes, and you can uh, transpose this sequence by an amount of uh, one octave, and when you compute, you get the transposed uh, sequence. Uh, the main difference is that it's not real-time, and it's an on-demand uh, pro computing, so it's only when I it uh, validate on this box that it search for any boxes that needs to be validated. Okay, so now um, a few words about uh, the context. So my field of research is uh, sound specialization and uh, let's say I've developed a nice uh, specialization software that can uh, perform some uh, DSP operation. This specialization software, typically, it will be used in different contexts. So um, at the beginning of the process, probably the artist, the composer, he will use a computer-aided composition environment such as open music in order to sketch some ideas and to test some, uh, some possibilities. Then later, there will probably be a concert, so with a live interaction and performance. And most likely, it will use MaxMSP or some similar software during this uh, concert. Then after the concert, maybe the sound engineer will produce uh, a mixing or post-production of this uh, event. And it will most likely use a DAW using some uh, VST or plugins. And uh, our specialization software, we also use them in uh, other contexts like uh, virtual reality application. And as we are researchers, we also use some uh, scientific tools like uh, MATLAB or stuff like this. So uh, the, the problematic is how to deploy a single software in many environments. And uh, uh, especially the, the GUI aspect, uh, that's the only uh, part that I'm going to talk about today. And so uh, my, uh, well, yeah, my attitude for becoming a, a better developer is just to be as lazy as, pos as possible. So, uh, maybe a few words about the different software. So MaxMSP, it comes with an SDK that allows you to create your own boxes, to develop your own objects. And uh, there is a part of this SDK is dedicated to UI, so you can develop your own uh, graphic objects within MaxMSP. Um, uh, you will have the keynote later, but as, um, as MaxMSP relies on Juice, the graphic API of uh, MaxMSP is pretty similar to what you can find in Juice, except that it is a, a C API, so basically it's a C wrapper to the uh, most standard function of Juice. You can uh, easily recognize them. And um, the problem is that it, it lacks some functionality. It doesn't have, uh, it is not as powerful as uh, Juice, for instance, uh, you don't have access to all the widgets that you, you can find uh, in Juice. Uh, open Music uh, is also somehow similar. You can also develop your own boxes. Uh, but the software is uh, entirely written in uh, Lisp. So it relies on uh, Lispworks. And uh, it's also possible to develop some uh, graphic objects. And for this, it uses uh, an API that's called the C API which provide a number of uh, widgets in a cross-platform way. Uh, you have some examples here where um, uh, the, the C API actually uh, uh, provides some bindings to native 
toolkit uh, to create some buttons or whatever widgets that you want. Uh, but the thing is, I'm not going to rewrite my software for this, all these different APIs. And I wanted to use Juice and just put my Juice object in uh, all these different contexts. So let me just show you a quick example. Mm. So that's an object that I have developed in MaxMSP. So that's a, a box like the other one. But it's a bit specific because when you double click on it, it actually pops up a window. And this window contains a juice, a juice component that I have developed. So that's a juice component for sound spatialization where you can uh, manipulate uh, sound in space and control their radiation, like orientation or aperture, whatever. That's not really important. And uh, this uh, juice component can also be integrated in uh, Open Music. Uh, yes, so that's an Open Music patch uh, where we have several boxes. These boxes are used to create or generate some trajectories, for instance, uh, with a 2D or 3D editor. And uh, we can connect this to this very same juice component that has been integrated into uh, Open Music. So this gray area is the juice component, and the remaining stuff are some Lisp buttons that connect and interact with this uh, juice component. So how did I do that? Uh, there are actually several ways to, to do that. Uh, the first method that I uh, experienced uh, for MaxMSP was first you need to create a native window. So uh, you make the native uh, Cocoa calls uh, to create an NSView, blah, blah, blah. You have to manage this window, like uh, have some uh, listener whenever the window open or close or is resized. And uh, uh, of course, you have to put a view into the window. And then you have to uh, make the juice component appear to the window, which is actually completely straightforward because there is in the juice uh, API a function that uh, allows you to do that with the add to desktop uh, component method. That's the method that I used in the, in the very first version that was like uh, 2007. I don't remember the details, but at the time it was the only method that worked. And so it's pretty easy to set up. The one constraint is that I had to maintain a bit of native code, all the window handling and stuff like this. Um, there is a, a pro and cons, I don't know, but the thing is the, the juice component appear in a separate window. So that could be useful because you could close the window and to save some CPU to avoid the graphics when you don't need it. Uh, but also sometimes it's not uh, convenient to have a lot of uh, pop-up windows. It's not uh, really flexible, but so it depends on the application. Another method that I, uh, that I experienced and that is even more easier is now it's possible to directly create within MaxMSP a document window, a juice document window, and to put uh, our juice component in it. So basically, that's like three lines of code to, to do that. And uh, all the native... Uh, uh, stuff, all the native uh, parts are already handled by the, the main uh, juice uh, classes like uh, the top level window, the resizable window, and the document window. Uh, so, pros, super easy to do, and same constraint, uh, it's in a separate window. There is a third way that maybe I should illustrate. It's also possible to uh, directly embed the juice component within the MaxMSP patch. So it, it will uh, really redraw with, uh, with the patch. So it's a different philosophy than the, the popping window. To do that, it's a bit more complex, but actually not that complicated. So uh, the several, st several steps to do. First, we need to uh, attach our object to the, the patch, the main MaxMSP patch, to be able to know whenever something uh, moves or is uh, changing in the patch. 
then we have to retrieve the actual rectangle where we need to draw our component. And then the component actually is uh, painted within an image, so uh, using uh, the standard uh, juice uh, operation to, to do that. And uh, then we obtain the MaxMSP uh, graphic context from the SDK, and we can draw this uh, image within the graphic context. And of course, we have to uh, receive all the mouse or keyboard events from MaxMSP and pass them to the, to the component. Uh, so uh, this last method requires a little bit more uh, work, but not that complicated though. It's, uh, I think, a little bit, a bit less efficient, but uh, it's still working. And uh, unlike the, the previous method, it's not in a floating window, but uh, directly embedded in the patch. So it kind of depends on uh, what you want and what you need. For open music, it was actually pretty similar approach, except that um, the operation of creating a native window and uh, obtaining a native view where we can draw our juice component is made by uh, the Lisp side of uh, open music. Um, but it's really similar uh, process. So we create the window, we put the component into the window. Uh, the component will uh, directly have access to the um, the message loops and uh, obtain the mouse and the keyboard events. And uh, the Lisp uh, side of the development, we just have to handle the resize of the window. So again, it's pretty easy to set up. And all the complex nat native uh, part of the code are actually handled by the, the KPI API uh, of Lisp. Uh, so just to illustrate, uh, it's basically uh, 10 lines of uh, Lisp uh, code to do, to do these things. <coughs> okay, so now uh, we've seen that we are able to put our uh, Juice graphics component pretty much wherever, wherever we want. But then uh, we will need to communicate with this component to send instructions or receive some uh, notification. So the standard way to do that uh, with MaxMSP, uh, again, it's a C API. So uh, first, we have to uh, say that we want a method that will respond to a given message. Then we have to write uh, the callback function that will be called whenever this message is received. But then this message will probably have some effect on the UI. So you have to make sure that the uh, operation will appear in the proper thread, in the message thread. So we have to defer this thread in the, this operation in the main thread. Then MaxMSP, whenever we receive some data, these data are in the form of an atom that can represent either a float or an int or a string, something like this. So we have to parse all this data. Then we have to change uh, to send this data to the juice component that will probably broadcast a change notification that the MaxMSP have to catch, and this will eventually produce a message on the output. So it's pretty tedious. It's quite uh, host specific. And also the thing is like um, your object probably will respond to a lot of messages. So you have to repeat these steps for any uh, messages that you have. So, uh, yes, no, I don't need an example here. So the, the strategy that I adopt to minimize uh, the, the effort of integration was to go through OSC. So the idea is that instead of uh, responding to any kind of uh, MaxMSP messages, was to embed these messages into an OSC uh, bundle or messages and communicate through OSC. So to do that, it's uh, pretty simple. So first, we need a class to uh, handle uh, an OSC message or bundle. OK, nothing really uh, fantastic. Then probably we will need a class to handle uh, a queue of OSC messages. So whenever a message comes in, we will queue it, and we will make sure that this queue is uh, thread safe. And then uh, all my uh, juice components will have uh, an OSC interface, so they will need to be able to process an incoming message, so that's a virtual function, 
and maybe they will also need to uh, um, give their current state in the in the shape of an OSC bundle. So that's a pretty simple interface. The code is like uh, ten lines, and uh, I will wrap all my juice components into. There will actually be a juice component with an OSC interface responding to these messages. And whenever something will change in the UI, I will uh, notify all my listeners with an OSC bundle containing all the, the parameters that have changed. And so on the MaxMSP side, I just have uh, two operations now to do. I will register a single um, callback that will respond to any kind of incoming messages. And whenever messages come, I will just need to still parse uh, the MaxMSP specific data, transform them into an OSC bundle with uh, this class, and then uh, push this bundle into the queue. And this queue will be processed either right now, if I'm already in the main thread, or it will need to be deferred in the main thread if, uh, if I'm not already there. And uh, yes, the processing is uh, pretty straightforward. And whenever uh, there is a user interaction in the interface that needs to, uh, to interact with MaxMSP, uh, there is this, uh, this kind of method that will, uh, from the juice component, send uh, an OSC bundle containing all the relevant information, everything that has changed. And once again, we just need to uh, convert this to the host specific format. So uh, basically, the idea of this uh, OSC interface is to have a single entry point to the juice component with uh, a process method. It's uh, pretty easy and uh, powerful because we, we can use all the advantages of uh, OSC, like it's pretty easy to dispatch a given messages to any of our child components uh, because there is this uh, hierarchical address which uh, makes the message really easy to, um, to route to the proper uh, components. There is a very little host specific code that needs to be written is uh, to convert the host specific messages to OSC and uh, back, uh, back and forth. And uh, it's also possible to use this mechanism, for instance, to store or reload a preset. A preset would just be a collection of uh, OSC messages that represent the current state of uh, our component. And uh, in this case, I'm using OSC to communicate locally between my MaxMSP application and my Juice component, but that could also be useful to communicate uh, through a network. And that's it. <laughs>